Welcome everyone to the EMS Technology and Services Conference Series. This is a, a pilot uh, offering uh, of this whole series, and I'm uh, really excited to have all of you here uh, with, uh, with us to get this started. Joining me as a co-host uh, for today's event and for the rest of the week will be Brett Lyle with uh, Brett Lyle Consulting. Brett, uh, welcome. Good morning, thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for being here. Yeah, so I think this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to keep things uh, pretty uh, pretty conversational and casual uh, during all the sessions today. Uh, but there is some information I'd like to share with everybody on the platform. Uh, so first of all, help. If you notice down in the lower right corner of your screen, there's a blue circle uh, with a question mark in it. Uh, the help system works very well. You can actually get into uh, live uh 24-7 support from the uh, AirMeet platform people if you're running into any issues. But I will tell you that most of the issues I've come across in uh, doing several events uh, with this platform uh, is using Google Chrome. So hopefully you're on Google Chrome. If you're not, switch over to it and that will solve uh, a lot of problems and give you uh, full functionality on the platform. Uh, so just wanted to kind of get that housekeeping uh, detail out of the way right now. Uh, but, you know, Brett, you know, when uh, you and I have been talking about this and as I've been talking with uh, some of the other faculty members and some of our uh, sponsors about this whole event, you know, it was kind of interesting the, the conversations we have about how this whole thing came about. And uh, so I thought that might be kind of uh, interesting to, to share with people just so you can put all of this perhaps in a little bit better context. So I was working on a, a project uh, for a, a consulting client of mine. And it kind of got me into the purchasing process. And, you know, something occurred to me is that in the different EMS systems that I've uh, worked in administration for or worked as a consultant and would be exposed to, to lots of different iterations in uh, purchasing processes, it was funny. It all kind of basically follows the same general format where the you know EMS administrator, the the decision maker, whatever their title would be, the rescue chief, the fire chief, chief bottle washer, whomever it may be, um, they would decide, okay, we're going to go out and we're going to buy new CAD system or EPCRs, defibrillators, whatever the case may be, and they'll reach out to the local decision makers, or I'm sorry, the uh, the subject matter experts. So you know, like if it was a, a clinical thing. Uh, you know, reach out to the medical director, the, the clinical managers, maybe the educators, and say, as we're considering buying this defibrillator, um, you know, what should I be looking for? What should I watch out for? What, um, what are the best practices that I need to make sure that my defibrillator will fit into well? And, you know, along with that, you know, I'm hoping that when those subject matter experts or, you uh, internal consultants, uh, whatever you want to call them, uh, the people that the administrator reaches out to, uh, I'd also hope that they would go out and do a literature search. So, you know, what does the, the scientific literature say? What are the, the trade journals been talking about? And, uh, you know, uh, more up your alley, Brett, you know, what, what social media is saying about, you know, some right. Of these things, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we look to our peers uh, for their experiences. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, having been in sales, being in marketing space. Um, one of the, the most important things is, is the people that we trust and their experiences. So getting people together in this space is really about networking and building those relationships with peers in the industry who have experiences, who are, you know, wherever they're on the spectrum. So those early adopters, people who are ready to jump into that brand new technology, and maybe those who are the late adopters. Um, and, and how do you find that middle ground? Where do you meet people where they are? So that's what's really exciting about this conference to me is virtually being able to connect with others and do exactly what we do at a conference, meet in the lobby, which is the lounge, um, go to a table, which is a booth, um, and, and really learn the things that we would have learned in, in person, but being able to do it here virtually. So really excited about this conference mix. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So, well, back to my uh, storyline, if you will. So, you know, you'd reach out to the experts, hopefully they'll look at the literature. Uh, and then the information you gather uh, would typically inform 
uh, what that uh, decision maker would put into for uh, RFP specifications, if, if it's kind of a, a formal process. Uh, or if it's a little bit more informal, it might kind of suggest to that decision maker, these are the companies that I need to uh, invite to come in and uh, make their presentations. And what I usually observed is uh, they would get scheduled back to back. So, you know, you'd have your management team there or maybe a procurement committee, and you'd have all the suppliers come in back to back to back, give their presentations, uh, and then the group would huddle up afterwards and then you know, talk about the pros and cons of, of each of the different things that they had a chance to see, shortlisted, and then enter into some negotiations. But what struck me, Brett, was, you know, my background with, uh, with quality and lean, Six Sigma, you know, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What struck me is how many times does this same basic process, you know, with some variations, of course, but how many times does this happen every day over and over and over throughout the EMS industry? And that struck me as kind of a, a huge duplication of effort, which you know is, I think, kind of wasteful. And right. so what occurred to me is if we did this at scale somehow, get everybody together that's interested in looking at, oh, I don't know, resuscitation technology. <laughs> Yeah. So, like, that's why we're here. This is a good story, Nick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so get them all together in one place, have the suppliers here. And instead of just your local subject matter expert being the one to kind of opine on what to look for, what to watch out for, et cetera, et cetera, um, get some top top people in here. Get, you know, resuscitation scientists and, you know, different subject matter experts uh, to kind of give that sort of advice to help inform your purchasing decision. And so that's kind of the model here is we're going to bring in these, you know, top experts to give a state of the technology presentation about these different sections in resuscitation. And as you can see from the schedule, we've got, you know, sessions uh, on manual defibrillation and pacing and uh, data analysis and reporting we're going to do today. Uh, tomorrow, we'll cover some additional sections throughout the rest of the week. But for each one of those, we'll have our top-level subject matter expert give the state of the technology talk on that particular category. Then following that, we will have uh, where we have them uh, available. Again, we're, this is a pilot. Uh, we, we don't have all uh, the sponsors uh, and uh, supplier participation that uh, we anticipate uh, doing a little bit later as this platform evolves a little bit more, but you'll see some supplier presentations, uh, just like you would have had if uh, you invited them to your agency to give their presentations. Uh, and then we will have a panel discussion uh, with not only the people that gave those uh, state of the technology lectures, but Brett, I've also invited in uh, tip of the spear people some frontline, you know, people that are working the streets would actually be the ones hands-on using uh, the technology. Uh, some educators, some EMS administrators, uh, et cetera, uh, to, to kind of give their different perspectives in our panel discussion. And importantly from the suppliers, I, I wanna make them a main part of the conference presentation because this is not about continuing medical education as center of target, although, You'll find that as these subject matter experts explain what to look for in these different technologies, they're explaining the underlying clinic, clinical rationale uh, behind the design of these products and services. So it's right. going to be educational in that regard. Right, um, which it should be, right? When you're talking about technology and devices and the support system of pre-hospital, fire, public safety, healthcare, hospital, um, all the different sectors, it's science-based. And so and that's something we've been throwing around a whole lot lately, but talking about the science behind why things are designed and how they're designed. I think sometimes that, that, that gets missed I'm um, in the purchasing process because you do have that element of this is my buddy who who lives down the street or this is somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, which is great for some things. But when you're talking about the patient care and you know what it's really going to bring to your agency and your community, it's really important to to listen to the technologies and understanding 
um, why they're developed the way they are, and what the science behind it is, and, and how those subject matter experts really view that um, in the bigger picture. So very cool. Yeah, and you know, with with that in mind, I mean, we're we're really targeting the the EMS decision maker and the uh, the people that you know I might call influencers, not in a social media contents, but people who will influence the purchasing decision. Like in the case of a a clinical technology, it'll be the medical director. In the case of uh, something related to the comm center, it'll be the comm center manager and uh, the the different dispatchers, call takers. Uh, system status controllers, whatever the, the case may be. Mm -hmm. But those people we want to have here too, to kind of help inform uh, their perspectives. So when they are giving counsel to the uh, the administrator, uh, they're, they're providing good information. So we wanna kind of do a lot of the homework for you with letting you know what are all the different products available, products, services, uh, technologies, uh, if you will, uh, for, for each of these different sections, in this case, resuscitation, and know what's available there. Uh, get this, you know, what should I be looking for from the state of the technology talk? Talk to your colleagues. And, and this is where the lounge feature in this platform, I really am fascinated by because for me, you know, I, I like to go to conferences for networking. I mean, sure, I, I go to the lectures, I, I wanna be educated, but the thing that really excites me about going to conferences is meeting my friends and colleagues there, meeting new people, sure. uh, doing the networking, and being able to go into that lounge for me is kind of like when I walk out of the lecture auditorium and there's usually that foyer outside, right? And I go get a coffee, get a croissant, and you know, I'm looking around at all the different tables uh, for my friends. Right. Go up and strike conversations, and we've all missed that, you know, for the past uh, uh, year plus. So much. I'm an in-person person, so I love conferences too. Hey, um, William Toon had asked if these sessions will be recorded. Great question. Uh, Mick, do you want to take that? Yes. So, uh, hello, Bill. Glad you're here. And... Sorry, I don't know you, Bill, not William. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Well, you know, it's it's whatever they logged in with. But anyway, Bill, yes, these uh, these sessions will be recorded. And uh, so what's going to happen after the whole conference is over, we're going to take all of the content, the state of the technology presentations, uh, the supplier presentations, the panel discussions, as well as the Q&A sessions, and those will all be archived in a resource center. Now, uh, this will be at emspurchasing.com, which is right now turned off. It basically, if you go to emspurchasing.com right now, it redirects you to the registration for, for this conference. But the idea is that afterwards, all of that information will be available to you as a, a resource center. Uh, our different uh, participating uh, corporate sponsors and other suppliers that come on board will have a company page and their company page will list all of their different products with thumbnails and a brief description. And you can click into that and get all the details on a particular defibrillator or uh, chest compression device, uh, et cetera. Uh, and if they did a supplier presentation during this conference, that's where you'll find uh, those presentations. And the link out to the websites, download PDFs, all of those sorts of things. So. All of that will be organized uh, by company and product, but to access this content, uh, you'll go in sections. So our first section we're building at emspurchasing.com is in resuscitation, and it will be populated by the content from this conference. But the next one we're probably going to do is on ePCRs. So we'll do this whole thing yeah. over again. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll invite those suppliers in to give presentations, again, to help inform if you're going to be uh, anticipating purchasing ePCR technology, come back here, get the state of the technology talks, panel discussions, supplier presentations, uh, peer-reviewed literature search and trade journal uh, search results. Take advantage of all the, the homework we're doing for you. Uh, and then that content will go as the EPCR section at emspurchasing.com. And then we'll do ambulances and then we'll do airway stuff and et cetera, et cetera. So this will kind of build out into 
almost like a a purchasing uh, a, a purchasing Process. guide on a steroid drip with uh, several boluses with uh, <laughs> with these uh, different conferences. So that's going to integrate together these online events with uh, that uh, resource center. Right. So hopefully that makes sense, Bill. Yeah. So um, they won't get our fun banter right now. That's what I what I heard. What I heard is bring your friends. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. it will be recorded on the back end. But um, I think just to say it's it's four packed days of really great content. Um, so if you are able to jump on and can catch one session, jump off, come back in. You're welcome to do that just like you would in a regular session in person. Um, if you've got to duck out for a day, meet us on, on Wednesday and, and um, you'll be just as welcome then. So if you're able to stick around all day, we'd love to have you. If, if not, we're happy to have you when we do. So I just want to say good morning to Tom. See how many other names I can butcher. Tom and Raymond, Joseph, Abby, Scott, Sammy, Stephanie, John, and um, Bill. I've learned. Good morning to all of you. Thanks for yes. being here. Yeah, so where Brett is reading this is if you use the uh, the chat uh, tab, that will allow you in all of the sessions to talk with the other people that are in this particular session. Uh, uh, further up on your screen is a feed button, uh, and that's like a chat for the entire conference. Uh, so take advantage of that. If you're looking for anybody in particular or want to see who all is here, click the people tab again on the very top uh, navigation bar at the very top of this browser window. Uh, then next to that is messages where you can send a direct message to a different individual. So, you know, if I want to go and uh, uh, send a direct message to Bill Toon, I can find William Poor Toon, Bill. click on that. Uh, there'll be a thing to send a message and I can uh, send a, a DM to, uh, to Bill and say, hey, you know, wanna catch up with you uh, on the next break. Meet me in the lounge at table seven, uh, and you go there and uh, and you, and you have a conversation with uh, with your coffee and croissant. Right. So get your coffee, guys. Yeah. Um, whichever coast you're on, I saw we have somebody joining from Australia. Very cool um, to to have someone from Perth on the line with us. Um, so yes, I was speaking to the conversations. There are more people in the session. So good morning to you all too. Um, and just to be clear, if if uh, Mick didn't get there. These conversations are a running dialogue for the day. Um, so if you come back in, you can look through all the comments if you miss anything. Um, so if you find something really insightful or really helpful, um, I found it's a really great practice to you know write that quote, put that comment, what you got of value, kind of reiterating it in that conversation section uh, where people that come back in later in the session can hear those, those good little sound bites, those little nuggets, even if they weren't in the session. So that would be re really helpful. I know our speakers appreciate it. And when you when you hear things that are of value to them and, and to give that feedback with them. Um, and then of course, as Mick said, that top right tab um, to be able to connect directly with people, um, vendors, peers, all of the above. Absolutely. So, so take advantage of that chat window. And while the different sessions are going on, feel free to, uh, to talk back and forth, uh, uh, ask questions of, of your colleagues. Uh, so it, it's a lot easier than passing notes, you know, or, you know, be, between each other from a, a real conference. So. <laughs> Do people still pass notes? I don't know. I don't know. It, it's been a while <laughs> since I've been in that setting. I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> Very good. And while we're talking about passing notes, uh, if you're on so social media, um, we are active. We've created a, a handle. I'll put it in the, the conversation as well, but it's hashtag recess tech 21. Um, so if you're having a conversation about the conference, what you get valuable out of it and on Twitter is a really great way for that quick and easy conversation um, to tweet, requote, quote other people, engage at that level immediately with that person to person. Um, if there's something you've got a value in the conference, LinkedIn is a great space. I know most of us are connected there. Um, you can you know, send people a request. Just as a little tidbit from Brett Lyle Coaching, um, always helpful for yourself and for others if you tell them where you connected with them. So if you're listening in, you hear a speaker and really would like to connect with them professionally, make sure you add a personal note when you go to connect with them. 
Tell them what you heard, tell them which session you sat in, tell them what you got of value and ask them to professionally connect. I've worked, um, find that works really well. People are a lot more willing to connect with strangers when they know why you wanna connect. And so if you're gonna go on LinkedIn, same space there, um, you're welcome to tag Mick, you're welcome to tag myself. Um, I don't wanna speak for their speakers, but I imagine they'd be okay with you tagging them as well. Um, and we also are on um, Facebook. If you wanna tag any of those things, any of those places, um, you're welcome to do that. And we'd love to see the, the feedback on what you're getting out of the conference. Absolutely. So uh, the other thing that uh, I'd, I'd like to just point out to everyone is during the breaks, you know, we've talked about using the lounge, but we've also got booths and uh, the booths have that same table functionality that the lounge does. So imagine you hear about a particular uh, technology uh, or service uh, in one of the presentations. Then during the break, you have a chance to go to the exhibit area where the booths are, uh, go into the booth, and there are tables there. And so uh, many of the suppliers uh, are actually staffing the booth. So if you click on a chair uh, in one of the, at one of those tables, uh, they'll see you there and it'll instantly turn into a video chat and you can have a conversation and ask uh, the, those sales representatives questions about the products, their specifications, uh, they can share a screen, uh, do demonstrations with you, whatever they're prepared to do. Uh, this will have things set up. And, you know, if um, you're fairly far along in your purchasing decision process, it uh, might even be the time to uh, start talking uh, uh, price, terms, features, options, all those sorts of things. So take advantage of the platform to talk to your colleagues uh, in the lounge and then go to the booths and talk to the suppliers. They're here to, to help you with your due diligence on your purchasing decision process. So was, go ahead, Brett. I was gonna say, it was just such a cool experience. I did that for the first time the other day with, with Mick and a few others on a virtual conference. And it really is a little bit socially like, oh, okay, I jumped in on a conversation. And how do you manage that? And there's the social part of it, uh, it's super fun. Lots of tables, lots of people interacting. Don't be shy, jump in, because it's awkward for all of us, I guess is what I'm saying. I'm a yeah. natural extrovert and uh, how to kind of manage that. So this is new for all of us, even though we've been on video for, what, a year and a half now? Um, I know most of, of the EMS healthcare people have done a lot of in-person, but as far as conferences go, this is new for all of us. So don't be shy, sit down at the table. Um, it does just open just like a Zoom if you just jumped on a Zoom without any introduction or conversation. So the small talk is normal. Feel free to excuse yourself when you're ready to step up from the table and go get your coffee refill, um, however you'd like to manage your morning and your breaks. But um, you do jump in and uh, special thanks to the sponsors for the conference. It'll be a really great day. Yeah, and you'll notice that in the lounge area, there will be logos uh, on the tables. Uh, they impart no particular uh, focus to the table. It's just brand exposure for our sponsors that we're, we're so appreciative of, of making all this possible for us. So uh, a, a big shout out to Zoll, uh, Stryker, and RQI Partners uh, for coming on, uh, understanding the, the vision that's uh, behind this whole event, uh, and trying to better serve their customers by supporting uh, this type of event. Because we're all after the same thing, right? We want to provide uh, the best patient care we can, and we want to make well-informed decisions about our purchases. And that's what this conference is all about. So we're going to get started in uh, just a few minutes here, but the, the last thing I'd, I'd like to draw some attention to is at the end of the day, except for the very last day of the conference on Thursday, uh, we're going to have an hour set aside uh, as a reception time. It'll be similar to the breaks, uh, but with one exception. Like the breaks, you'll be able to go to the lounge, hang out, uh, talk with your colleagues, uh, network, mingle, roam from table to table, all that sort of stuff, uh, go to the booths. But in the last 30 minutes, we're going to use a feature called speed networking. Now, so <laughs> go ahead, Brett. No, I'm just excited. <laughs> I'm ready for you to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I've been married a long time, so I never did speed dating, <laughs> but... From what I've seen on TV and uh, from what I understand it, that's kind of the, the model here. But what happens in the speed <laughs> networking is you opt into it. So please opt in uh, and, and give it a try. But what happens is the platform server 
will randomly assign you for five minutes with another attendee. Hopefully someone you don't know. If you do, great. Uh, but hopefully someone you don't know. And for that five minutes, the way I would suggest you approach it is take two minutes each. And each of you say who you are, you know, where you work, what you do there, and then briefly describe a project or a problem you're working on. Maybe you're shopping for a defibrillator and you know, uh, that's the issue. Or maybe you're working on implementing uh, crew resource management at resuscitation scenes, whatever the case may be. But just briefly talk about that. The other person does the same. That uses up four of the five minutes. And then in the last minute, exchange contact information. Wow, great. Great talking with you, Brett. I'd love to talk to you more about that thing. Uh, Why on the next break uh, or, or the next day, uh, meet me in the lounge at table nine, and uh, we'll continue the conversation or you swap uh, email addresses and you continue the conversation offline. But just like a real conference, it's an opportunity to meet new people. And the thing I like about it is I am a little bit uh, introverted at the conferences sometimes. So instead of going up to one of these tables where I don't know anybody and just kind of you know, standing there and uh, trying to get in on the conversation and meet some people, the speed networking kind of makes that a little bit uh, less awkward, I think, uh, and easier to do. So please give it a try. Expand your professional network because, Brett, does professional networking matter? Uh, I, I, my vote is yes. So, you know, that's how we're here today. Mick and I got connected uh, years ago, back when I was at MedStar, I believe it was, um, and you're with American Heart, if I'm yes. remembering that correctly. Um, we've met once and, you know, in person and and been connected and stayed connected and um, maybe a few times, maybe a few yeah. times. Yeah. Um, but but relationship building online is is a thing, a thing of the present and a thing of the future. It's not going anywhere. So um, being a little uncomfortable is normal, um, but getting to that point where you're comfortable reaching out, having conversations and look, finding best practices, you know, EMS and really our country is so different in one region to another, even from one part of, you know, I'm in Texas, even from North Texas to Central Texas, light years away. Um, and I know it's the same in, in big, there's a lot going on in, in New York right now, um, it's wildly different from upstate to, to uh, the city and, and all other places in the country. So I'm really excited to get connected with people. I'm definitely going to partake myself and um, just wanted to kind of put this out there that those are going to happen every day for the next couple of days. So if you have a session you can plug into and the only other piece you can plug in is um, just being present for that hour and uh, block off your calendar, guys, and spend some time, come hang out at the booths, hang out with our vendors, our sponsors and supporters and um, technology providers and each other. Absolutely. So let me tell you what's going to happen next. We're in just a couple minutes, we're going to start our first uh, section, if you will, on manual defibrillation and pacing. And uh, we'll see a presentation from Dr. Vince Macesso uh, from University of Pittsburgh. Uh, Vince is a great guy, former paramedic uh, before he uh, went to medical school, uh, now is a EMS medical director, uh, does a lot of work in the resuscitation space, which is why I wanted to, uh, to bring Dr. Macesso in. Uh, to opine on uh, defibrillation. So we'll see his presentation and then uh, we'll end that session. And between these sessions, you'll be back in the lounge, et cetera, for a couple minutes. And then when we get ready to start the next piece, which will be uh, supplier presentations and panel discussions, you'll see a countdown timer at the bottom of your window. Uh, and it will allow you to go ahead and click on the schedule, click into the session, enter the session, um, and then we'll have the, uh, the panel discussion and supplier presentations. Uh, no live interaction there other than through the, uh, the chat. Uh, but then after that, we'll go to live Q&A. And uh, uh, several of the uh, faculty from the conference uh, will also be joining us there. And uh, we'll have live Q&A. You can click into the Q&A box. You'll notice that up in the, uh, uh, the, the window beside you right now. But there's also another cool feature, and I'm hoping people will be bold enough to use it. Who's going to be bold? Who's going to be bold this yes. morning? Who's had their coffee? <laughs> it's the raise hand feature. So when you click the raise hand feature, we'll see your name in the queue. 
and we will select you. But what's going to happen is it's going to turn on your webcam and microphone and you'll actually appear on this digital stage. And it's kind of like walking up to the microphone in the aisle at the conference hall. You know, you'd walk up to the microphone, Mick Gunderson from Madisonville, Tennessee, I'd like to ask about X, Y, or Z. And uh, so, so that'll be kind of uh, neat to do too. So I'm, I'm hoping people will take advantage of all the functionality we're gonna be offering. Wonderful to have you all here. Thank you so much to, to Zoll Stryker and uh, RQI Partners uh, for being our early adopter sponsors. Excited to have all of this taking place. We're gonna go ahead and end this session. Uh, like I said, you'll be put back in the lounge area for a couple minutes until we fire up that particular session and get ready to watch Dr. Vince Macesso. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone.